Kitchens are the heart of the home, but a reno in this space can be very costly. We have some budget-friendly solutions and ideas for you on how to take your kitchen from drab to fab with some priming, painting and styling. Should we get started? Let's do it. This kitchen, with its clinical white tiles and unsightly cupboard doors, is screaming for a makeover. A must-do step in a kitchen renovation is clearing the space and cleaning the space. So take all your kitchen items out of the kitchen so they're out the way. I'm going to be using a sugar soap solution to clean any grime or grease that may have accumulated on the countertops, the cupboards and the walls. Once our kitchen is clean, we can assess the condition and replace any old silicone sealant, fill in any gaps that we have anywhere in the tiles or grouting, as well as secure any loose tiles. While Al's busy cleaning, I'm going to get started removing cupboard handles. Before we can paint the cupboard doors, we remove the old handles and fill the holes we won't be using with wood filler. Now that our kitchen is clean, we can assess the condition. And as I can see over here, I've got a few gaps in between our tiles. I'm going to be using some painter sealant, which fills in those gaps. It dries quickly and you can paint right over it. The next step is preparing our surfaces for paint. So we're going to paint all the surfaces, the walls, the cupboards, even our countertops. But first, we're going to use an orbital sander, even some hand sanding, just to roughen up each of our surfaces, which creates better adhesion for our multi-surface water-based primer. Now, why we're adding the primer is so that when we add our paint color, it adheres and lasts for time to come. For our cupboards, you can see they're in a sad state. But because we're on a budget reno and to show you how to save money, I'm not going to replace our doors, which you would need to do if they are really in a bad shape. I'm just going to add some decorative molding like this, cut them at a 45 degree and add a bit of depth and character. Using a 220 grit sandpaper, be sure to give the cupboard doors a proper overall sanding. Wait for the wood filler to be completely dry before sanding off the excess. It is also advisable to give the tiles a light sanding to remove the glossy surface before painting over the tiles. Using a sponge roller and brush, apply a multi-surface primer to all the surfaces you are looking to paint. This creates the perfect surface for the top coat paint to adhere to. It's always a good idea to remove plug plates where possible before painting. If you can't remove the plug plate, then opt for masking tape to protect them from the paint. For strips that will form the cupboard door cladding, start by measuring out the lengths of strips that you will need. Transfer the measurements to the wooden slats and cut each end at an angle of 45 degrees. Using a mitre saw ensures a perfect 45 degree angle. Making use of a contact adhesive means no screws or nails. Simply apply the adhesive to the back of the wooden slats and stick the slats onto the cupboard doors. A clamp helps to keep the slats in place while positioning the rest of the slats. Yes, now it's finally time to start painting. But before we get painting with our surfaces prepped and primed, remember your primer may create some bubbles. So use some fine grit sandpaper just to remove them and there you go. Color wise? Oh, color wise guys, we've chosen two colors of gray here that really complement each other. I'm going in with the dark gray, which is a water-based enamel on the cupboards and the countertops. I'm using this lighter gray, which is a washable PVA. I'm gonna put that on the backsplash and the rest of the walls. Let's go. Painting. <laughs> To get rid of any air bubbles in the primer, simply give the primed surface a light sanding using a 220 grit sandpaper. Make use of painter's tape to mark off areas that you don't want painted. To apply the top coat enamel paint, make use of a sponge roller and brush. The water-based enamel is perfect for the cupboard doors and surrounding tiles. It is a tough satin finished enamel that can endure bumps and light scratches. 
Now for the finishing touches and we have great tips for you. Look here, wall tile stickers, easy to apply. They're going to act as the backsplash and frame the hob on the countertop. Next is we've exchanged the handles of the cabinets for these beautiful brass knobs. I'm going to use the existing holes on the top cabinet, but at the cabinets at the bottom, I want to reposition the knobs here. And what I've done is I've taken a simple piece of cardboard. I've measured four centimeters across and four centimeters down. And that center point is where I drill every hole into every cabinet to secure the knobs. So while Al finishes off our beautiful hardware, I'm going to fit on our electrical cover plates, as you can see over here. And you'll notice that we actually painted the surfaces white. That's because it breaks up the two-tone colors that we initially planned. And that's okay, because it's your design. I'm also gonna add a bead of silicone around our stovetop just to seal it and keep it looking great for a lot longer. While Elle finishes her mosaic magic over there, I found a spot for our utensil rack. I'm gonna place it right below our cabinets, approximately eight centimeters down. And I think that's a great spot because it gives enough space for our utensils to hang beautifully. Now, just be careful of where your wiring might be. Now, obviously we've got a stove over there and a plug over here. Typically your wiring comes from the ground up, but if you're still unsure, consult an electrician. So let's measure out first. And now it's time to do some pilot holes. So I'm just going to level it up to where we've marked. Now, instead of drilling through tile, which could potentially crack, I'm going to drill through our grouting. So I'm gonna make a marking over here and one over here. Now we can just drill our pilot holes and secure with a screw. Use the same size drill bit for the pilot holes as the screw you will use to secure the utility rack to the wall. A piece of masking tape helps stop the drill bit from slipping on a smooth surface. Using a masonry bit, drill holes into the wall. To secure the utility rack to the wall, add a wall plug and secure using screws. Oh wow, Ryan, that looks great! Well yeah. done! Just with a little bit of paint, some hardware, it looks like a brand new kitchen. Amazing, I can't wait to style it. I see green herbs, white ceramic pots and yeah. some wooden chopping boards. Guys, at home, have fun and take your time with a renovation like this one. I think it's safe to say, we've made the kitchen the heart of the home again. <laughs>